mathematicians, welcome. I'm so excited to see you here. My name is Miss Neighbors. Today I need your help to solve a disagreement between a friend and me. Disagreements when two people think differently about something. My friend and I were talking about fractions. Do you know what a fraction is? A fraction is a number that represents equal parts of a whole or a collection. A fraction is written using a numerator and a denominator. Have you ever heard those words? Do you know what they mean? Here's the fraction 2 fourths. How many parts has this whole been partitioned into? Partition means to cut into equal parts. The whole's been cut into four equal parts. So in the fraction 2 fourths, the denominator is four because that is the number of same size units we partition the whole into. We have four equal parts and these are called fourths. How many parts are shaded in this model? How many shaded parts can we count? Let's count the fourths that are shaded. Before we count, it's important to know that fractions can represent part of a whole. So when we count, we're going to say the unit we're counting. In this case, the units are called fourths. So when we count, we will say fourths, not just one, two, or three. So one fourth, two fourths. We counted two fourths. The numerator is the number of units we've counted. So in two fourths, the numerator is two. So. To summarize, a fraction is a number that represents equal parts of a whole and consists of a numerator and denominator. The numerator is the number of units counted. The denominator is the amount of same size units the whole was partitioned into. Okay, knowing those words are going to be very helpful with solving this disagreement. So now that we have an understanding of fractions and some important words, let's look at this problem my friend and I are having. My friend Carly thinks one half is greater than one third. I think one third is greater than one half. What about you? What do you think? Well, I know three is greater than two, which is why I think one half is smaller than one third. Do you agree or disagree with me? Give a thumbs up if you agree and a thumbs down if you disagree. Interesting. I saw some thumbs up and some thumbs down. Let's look at an example with some people sharing a cake to help us solve this dispute. What if two people want to share one cake? They wanna be fair, so they want the shares each person gets to be equal in size, meaning each person gets the exact same amount. That is something unique about fractions. When we say one half or one third or one fourth, each part of the whole must be the same size, meaning we have equal parts. These are thirds because each part is the same size. These are not thirds because all of the parts are not the same size. Just because something is cut up or divided into a certain number of parts does not mean we can call it a fraction. Fractions must have units that are all the same in size. So back to our problem. We have one whole cake and two people. How can we cut it so each person has a fair share? Remember, a fair or equal share in fractions means each person gets the exact same amount. Hmm. What if the cake was cut like this? Can we call these pieces halves? Why not? Remember, each unit has to be the same size. If two people shared this cake, one person would get a way bigger amount than the other and it would not be fair. Fractions always show two equal amounts. What's another way the cake could be shared so each person gets the same amount? Right. We can cut the cake exactly in the middle. In math, we call this half. Okay, so each person will get one piece of cake. What can we name each of these pieces? Here's a hint. If we cut the cake in half, what can we call those pieces? Remember in fractions, we have a numerator and denominator. The denominator tells us how many same size units the whole was partitioned into, and the number tells us how many of those same size units we counted. When we say one half, we're communicating that the size of each piece is a half of the whole, and we've counted one of those halves. Even though we cut the cake into two parts, we call those pieces halves because the whole was cut in half. So when you see a fraction with a denominator of two, you say halves, not twos or twos. I would say these fractions as two halves, one half, and three halves. Okay, so let's get back to our problem. 
Now that we know what one half looks like, let's compare it to one third. If we wanted to show thirds, how many people will be sharing a cake? When a cake is shared with two people, our denominator is two. So when the same cake is shared with three people, our denominator can be three. Let's see what one third for each person would look like. We can see that each person still got one piece of cake. But I wonder what happened to the size of each piece since we're now sharing a cake with one more person, three instead of two. Think about a time when you shared food with a sibling, a friend, a cousin, or a classmate. Usually when we share, we want to be fair. So think about each person having to receive the same amount. Sometimes fair means someone gets more than the other if they really need more of something such as medicine or water. For today's problem with fractions, when we say fair, we mean equal. Everyone gets the same amount. So the more people the cake is shared with, what happens to the amount each person gets? Let's look at models of one half and one third to answer that. What do you notice? Let's look at one half and one third apart from the whole cake. What do you notice about the size of one half compared to one third? Wow, do you notice what I notice? One half is greater than one third. The part is larger. Do you know why? One half is greater than one third because the two and one half does not represent two holes. When we think of the number two, this is a whole number representing two holes, which in this situation would mean we have two cakes. The two and one half represents halves or parts. One hole cut into two parts, so these are smaller than two holes. Think back to the example of sharing cake. What if at first the cake was shared with three people, then three more people came over and now it has to be shared with six people? What do you think would happen to the size of the piece of cake each person would get? Well, this is what the cake would, this is what the cake would originally look like. Partition into thirds. The pieces are called thirds because there's three equal parts. Now, look what happens when we share with six people. Each individual piece gets smaller so that each person gets an equal and fair share. What is the amount called that each person would get if a cake was shared with six people? Right, one sixth, because the pieces are called six and we counted one six for each person. Although the denominator looks like a larger number, the value is actually smaller because the size of our piece gets smaller the more times we partition the whole. Let's look at one more example together. I know this can be tricky. It can be a tricky thing to understand. What if four people shared one cake? What's the amount that each person would get? Brilliant. Each person would get one fourth because there are four equal parts called fourths and each person gets one of those fourths. So now what happens if we share with eight people instead of four? What's gonna happen to the size of the individual parts? Exactly. The amount of people we shared with increased from four to eight. So to make sure everyone got an equal share, the size of the individual pieces got smaller. So which is greater than one fourth or one eighth? Which fraction represents a larger amount? Remember, four and one fourth represents the size of the units, not the whole number four. We cannot compare four and eight like whole numbers because we're not comparing four whole objects to eight whole objects. We're comparing two holes, one partition into fourths, and one partition into eighths. When we're comparing one fourth and one eighth, we're comparing parts of a whole rather than a whole number. Looking at the model, we can see that one fourth is larger than one eighth, meaning one fourth is greater than one eighth. This also means that one eighth is less than one fourth. All right, disagreement solved. Seems like I was wrong, but that's okay, because I learned something. Learning about how fractions can be different from whole numbers can be tricky at first. Let's review what we learned. Today, we talked about fractions and learned that even though the denominator may appear to be larger, the larger the denominator, the smaller each unit is, meaning its value is also smaller. When we work with fractions, it's important to remember that we're working with part of a whole, and sometimes we're working with numbers that are less than one. This is why one half is larger than one third. When we usually think of two and three, we think that three is greater. 
but because we're working with fractions, we're working with amounts that are less than one. Three and two are whole numbers, while the fractions we work with today are less than one whole. This might help you understand. Imagine if you and a friend shared this pizza. Your shares might look like this. Now, what if you had to share that one pizza with an entire class and there were 16 people in your class? Now look at the size of your piece. You had to make sure that each person got a piece so the individual parts got smaller. Practicing helps your brain take in these new ideas. See if you can compare these fractions and develop your understanding of fractions on your own. One fourth and one sixth. Which fraction would be greater? Which amount's larger? Which fraction would give you a larger amount? Keep thinking and I'll see you next time.